Why Proto 25? Well, here's the backstory. There were three products that really inspired me to make P25 in the first place. Product 1. I loved flying my tiny Flywoo 1.6 inch baby quad. Sometimes exploring up to 1.5 kilometers away discreetly where animals or humans would never notice. However, in the back of my mind, I really wanted GPS return home capabilities. And when adding a naked action camera to it, it really slowed it down to the point you couldn't even attempt a power loop without hitting the ground hard. Product 2. The Flywoo GM10 Nano V3 GPS. The first lightest and mightiest tiny GPS I've ever seen. Product 3. DJI O3 Air Unit. So this pretty much killed the need for an action camera for all of the sub 250G class. These three products combined really sparked my imagination and allowed me to design my dream micro quad. Originally, it was a 2 inch design and after months of testing it slowly evolved into a more efficient and powerful 2.5 inch. And because the O3AU was pretty expensive, I didn't want to buy so many. I expressed this to my friend Kibi early on and he helped me design a quick release TPU print. This was perfect because the O3 can be removed or reinstalled without screws in less than 3 minutes. My build features 1404 motors, which is light and powerful. It can handle mountain dives with no issues, and even with a 200 gram battery strapped to its back. I also found it had impressive stability in high winds. I designed it to have an ultra center of gravity. Picture a flying ball. Though 1 inch larger in total length and width than my initial 2 inch vision, it's still easy to put in your bag, there's no props in view, and the ridiculous speed and stability makes it extra fun and worth it. Lightweight titanium screws are also used throughout the whole frame to achieve the best flight performance available. I'm confident you will enjoy it too. So now I'm going to walk you through the build video. So in the kit, you're going to have two carbon plates, a bunch of hardware and TPU prints. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is just pop in the LED light holder, just line it up nice and it, it goes in with a nice popping noise. It should look like this after it's gone in. This LED can be customized in Betaflight, included as wires as well if you need it. Put it under these two tabs first and then have a little tool to help you. So assuming that you're going to use the AIO, now you're going to put the M2 by 12 titanium screws in. The AIO I'm using is 25 by 25. So it's these outer holes in here. And if you're using a mini stack, then these are 20 by 20. Please note, if you use a mini stack, you won't be able to install the DJI O3. So definitely go for the AIO if you plan to use the DJI O3. I just keep like a finger down here and then just screw it in. I made the holes purposely smaller in the TPU print. You don't really need a nut. Okay, now we're going to install the TPU feet. Do you see the sharp point of the feet up here? That's how you match them up and know which one's which. So basically just slip in one corner, kind of like you're slipping on shoes, and just push it in. That's it. Okay, so next up we're going to put our AIO on and screw in our motors. So I already pre-did everything from my prototype. I'll just put this on. As for the direction of the drone, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's symmetrical. But for the AIO, definitely choose your DJI plug should be facing the camera. Your XT30 should be facing the rear of the quad. So as a precaution, just cut a small piece of electrical tape, cover up the LED so there's no chance that it will touch your AIO if it somehow jumps out on its own. All right, now we're going to secure the AIO with nylon M2 nuts supplied. So just go around all four corners until your fingers just start slipping. So just double check that you got clearance to the LED light and it's not touching. Next up, I'm going to screw in the motors. The ones I'm using for this quad is T-Motor F1404, 4600 kV. So take your M2 by five screws and bolt down each motor. Just take it easy and, and don't tighten it too much, just finger tight. And now I'm just going to take some fabric tape, make the wires a little neater and stronger during accident, or you can also use electrical tape. And you can see what I did with the XT30, and this is the length. So this would be poking out the back of the quad. And here's my cap, and I just shrink wrapped it. So next up is we're going to put the Nano RX and also the Nano GPS into its holder. 
At the moment, this is the only GPS that fits the holder. The STL files are online. If you're using a different GPS, you could totally go ahead and modify the file. The holder fits a TBS Nano RX and similar size RXs. Just ignore my ugly electrical tape here. To put the GPS in, you just go from under. You can see some ridges here. You basically just have to slide it under this. The square part will pop out of here. And just do it carefully because there's something in the back here that can rip off easily. I already broke one before. I think it might be a battery. So once you get it to this point, you just have to push on the back here and just pull the print ever so slightly, you just pop it in. There you go, you hear the snaps. So the wires are facing back. Just remember that, don't put the wires from the other side, it only fits this way. Next up is the Nano RX. Okay, so now it's in. Pop the print a little bit side to side just to make sure it's snug and in there. And you see these two little loops? That can hold a full-size T antenna. Basically just loop one side first, loop it in, and then push it all the way in as far as you can do, and put it into the other side. Bend it until it goes in. All right, so I'm just gonna center it so there's less stress on these elastic bands. It's, you see now it's a little bent, but you can just bend it back. So we have four M2 standoffs here. Basically, these are the O3 air unit holders. It goes in between. So just put it here and then just slide the standoff through, through the whole assembly like that. Make sure it's flush to the floor. Oh, now we're just gonna slide the rear standoff through, put it in there. So now we're gonna put the rear antenna mount through. Put in one side at a time. And put the XT30 through, it will go in between this area. Just make sure there's enough length to get to the battery. Make sure you don't pinch any wires while you put these through. So at this point, you can take your DJI air unit and just wrap the wire underneath. I'm just gonna put it into the plug and play port. All right, she's in. The DJI air unit hugs these corners and the sling hugs the top. So I'm just gonna pop it in there. And put in another side. So it holds, these are like elastics kinda, but really tough ones. Now that's all together. You could put the camera in, make sure it's not upside down. I've done that too many, too many times. So look at the DJI logo, coil this wire in and I would stick to the hole at the bottom here. This is a universal camera mount. If you're using other types of cameras, just put it in a position where your camera's protected. And for the camera screw, just use M2 by four. All right, so the antenna mount is like a C-clip design. So you could actually just, you could just push it in there and that's it. We're gonna screw the standoffs to the bottom of the frame using the M2 by six screws. So just be careful when you do it, make sure you don't pinch any wires. So this frame features a quick release feature for the DJI O3 air unit. All you have to do is remove the top plate, take out the two screws on each side and remove the camera, pop the slings and remove the air unit and, and remove the plug from the FC and then just pop out the antenna. And then in three minutes time, you can move this to another quad. And when you're done with that, you can move it back here. So that way you save money. You don't have to buy too many of these. For the people who like to use naked action cameras, I've included this TPU mount to secure it. So take your M2 by five screws and just put it through the back here. And once that's through, just push it through this hole. Secure the back with an M2 nut. Let's give her a really good twist. So that'll be nice and tight when you put your M2 by six screws right into the frame. I've also included a titanium M3 screw and a M3 thin nut. The thin nut just has to press into one side and then you can slot in your naked action camera. And if you decide to use the action camera mount, it's gonna be really hard to mount a battery uh, facing north to south. So you have to mount your battery toilet tank style. There's a slot here where you can loop through protostrap. And please go to the description below to see how to use protostrap. If you don't use it properly, your light is gonna fly off. Obviously, you're going to need some Tessa grip here as well. And if you don't want to do toilet tank style, you can use some spacers to lift the AIO or your stack and 
run your strap at the bottom, but then it would cover up your LED. So that's the only downside. So I also included a few items for your convenience for the people who don't use the DJI O3 AU. Depending if you're using an AIO or like a mini stack, you could use a combination of these things to get a nice stack happening. Including the kit is also two zip ties. So you could use them to clean up your build. One notable feature is if you plan to use a smaller RX antenna, uh, it probably won't fit using these slings. So to use a zip tie, do you see the two holes here? You can mount your mini RX antenna here using the zip tie. Put your zip tie through. People who skip the video are like, why do you have two antennas right now? Well, that's why you don't skip the video. This is, su this is for super range. Uh, anyways, so you see how I mount the mini RX antenna? Just zip it in. And you can also mount it up front too. Now finally, you can put on your top plate. So this is directional. The grills is facing towards the rear. Put on your Tessa grip, which is included with every frame. I personally like to cut them like this for this frame. It fits really well. So this is from my prototype. But if you're really concerned with weight, you can cut it like this as well, which is on my two inch prototype. If you want more security, use more. Let's put one on here. Just take your the sharpest scissor you own and cut along these lines and you'll get that hexagon. And you got more for later if you screw up. So remove this. Ooh, very nice and just start cutting. Of course, it's gonna be better if you lay it flat like this and try to keep your scissors straight and just cut along the lines. I'm gonna make my cut like this. I have plenty of these, so I'm just gonna waste it for the sake of nice cut, cut like that. Round it off a little bit. And you see there's some excess edges here, so you can even cut that off too if you're really picky. Just put the plastic back on I lost it. Um, I got too excited and just chucked it across the room. So you can stick a face down to any plastic. Usually I would like to take some rubbing alcohol and just clean the top plate a little bit. Doing it this way, I'm definitely going to cover up that toilet tank slot, but I don't plan to toilet tank. Which reminds me, I totally forgot to put the proto strap on first. And center it. You can take some plastic and just put it on there and just... Okay, 30 seconds later. <laughs> In the description below, I have a video teaching you how to use proto straps. So it's very important to watch that. So in the kit, we have two types of straps, proto strap S and proto strap MS. So the proto strap S can fit stuff like this, like a 454S or a 724S and pro strap MS can still fit this and can also fit this all the way to a 3000 mile Lion. So there's these universal rails. So you can have it more farther back or you could have it farther forward. When you're satisfied, just tighten it up on both sides. All right, so now the build's pretty much complete. Now we're gonna check if it has any magic smoke. So what I like to use is this Gap RC smoke stopper. I'm just gonna put that in there. What I usually do is look for this LED light. So if it's not on, then that means something wrong and unplug right away. So I don't, I don't like to plug in my LiPo all the way in. So let me just plug it in now. So you see I have a solid green light, so that means I'm good. So I can continue to just plug that in and we can take a look and you can see the LED light underneath turning on and I got it on Larson mode right now and I made it blue to match the TPU prints. Just change the setting in Betaflight and just have fun with it. If you used all the same electronic components as I did, such as the motors, and the props that I used. Then you can go to the support page on the protofpv.com website, hit downloads, hit Proto 25, and check out the pit and filter tune. Then on you can copy these settings into your own beta flight and experience what I experienced flying the drone. So these props are from Emacs. They're the Avan 2.5 inch, and I've included M2 by seven titanium screws. So once I got the holes lined up visually, and you can Screw it in, remember, just finger tight, two finger tight. My favorite prop direction is props out. It's proven to have better prop wash handling for sub 250G, so definitely do props out. Nice, that's it. All right, so let's weigh her up. It's just under 142G, and if you put my favorite battery on it, it's still well under 250G. And let's try my 1100 battery. 
Oh, still under 250 G, so still got about 18 G's left. And what if we put the Lion on it? Oh, all good, still under 350 G. All right, guys, you made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoy the quad. Like and subscribe and follow for more. If you need more information, everything's in the description below. Message me on YouTube anytime and I'll try to respond ASAP. Thank you again for the support and see you on the next one.